what are decimals? Take a look at these images. What do you notice about them? What would happen if we tried to count the number of watermelon or apples that are shown? Can we say that we have three watermelon or four apples? What about the coins? If we counted them to find their value, would we have a whole dollar, less than a whole dollar? What would their exact value be? These questions can all be answered by using decimals. So what are decimals? Decimals represent parts that are less than one whole. Let's take a look at our place value chart. We know from previous lessons that when we count whole numbers, we start in the ones place, and that as our numbers get bigger, the place value is 10 times larger than the one before it. Now, let's look at our place value chart when we add decimals to it. The first thing that you'll notice is that we have what we call a decimal point, and it separates the whole number values from the decimal values. Notice that the decimal point is right after the ones place. Just as whole numbers continue to get bigger as they move to the left, decimal numbers continue to get smaller as we move to the right. Let's look at an example. Take a look at the square. This is one whole square, or just one. When we write its value in the place value chart, we would place a one in the ones place because it is one whole. Now, let's divide our square into 10 equally sized parts. Each part represents one tenth of the square. To make it easier to see, we'll shade one of the parts yellow. Let's write its value in the place value chart. Because this is a part and not a whole square, we will place a zero in the ones place to show that it is not a whole. And because this is one part out of 10, we'll place a one in the tenths place. This is one tenth. This time, we'll divide our square into 100 equally sized parts. Notice how our parts are getting smaller each time. Each part represents one one hundredth of a square. Like before, we'll shade one of the parts yellow. When we write its value in the place value chart, again, we do not have a whole, so we'll place a zero in the ones place. We also don't have any tenths, so we'll place a zero in the tenths place. But we do have one hundredth. This is one hundredth. Let's divide our square one more time. This time, we'll divide it into 1,000 equally sized parts. Now our parts are really tiny. Each part represents 1,000th, or one out of 1,000. We'll shade one part yellow, but it is so tiny, it is hard to see. When we write its value in the place value chart, we have zero whole squares, zero tenths, zero hundredths, but one thousandth. This is one thousandth. Let's take a look at another way we can represent decimals. You've probably used base 10 blocks before to represent numbers, but did you know that you can also use them to represent decimals? First, we have to define what one whole looks like. We'll use the cube to represent one whole or our ones. Because 10 flats equal one cube, We'll use our flats to represent the tenths, the rods will represent our hundredths, and our units will represent our thousandths. Using these base 10 blocks, we can create models for decimal numbers. Let's try one. First, let's clear off our mat. Let's create a model for this decimal number. We have two ones, five tenths, three hundredths, and one thousandth. Let's clear our mat and try another example. Let's create a model for this decimal number. This time we have zero ones, so we're not going to put anything in the ones place. We do have one tenth. We don't have any hundredths, so we're not going to put anything in our hundredths place. And four thousandths. Now it's your turn to try a few examples.